Hi, this is Rick. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sirwitz Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner and subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoy the video, be sure to like it. If you want to learn more about my YouTube videos, my self paced courses, or my online classes, you can click on the links that appear at the end of the video. So, this is what I'll be working with in this. I always enjoy painting sunflowers. I just have a little bit of fun painting. I like the shapes, I like the colors. And here I'm going to be working in an 8x10 format. And uh, I'm going to be using a, this is a quill brush. This is a uh, uh, Princeton Neptune uh, quill brush, size 4. It's a nice brush, nice and soft. Loads up well. And I'm going to start by uh, putting a, uh, a larger wash over, uh, over my composition. As I said, I'm working with a uh, 8 by 10 size uh, uh, work area. And so it's not too large. And I've got some gamboge that I'm painting with here. And I'm just putting a big wash down. I'm working at about a 20 degree angle or so. Let's see, I got a little bit of yellow in here, a little bit here. So I'm just starting, like I said, I'm starting with a big wash, a couple big washes. Making sure I load that brush up, have plenty of moisture. I'm going to take some of this Clonacrid in gold. And I'm going to put just a little bit of darker, richer color in some areas. I'll do some layering to bring up some of these edges, work on the edge development. I have uh, a number of YouTube videos out there of sunflowers. I have a couple of them out there. As I said, I enjoy the subject I enjoy painting. I've painted them small and I've painted some full sheet, a little larger format. Bring this wash down here. It's just one continuous wash. Let's see. And I've got it mostly where I want to have it, I believe. And I think that that ought to work. So now I'm going to pick up the excess moisture and I'm going to give this a dry. Okay, so I've dried that. Now I'm going to use my same brush. I'm going to take some sap green. I like this color. And let's see, let me take a little bit of that gamboge put in there. And now, again, I'm going to put a big wash down. Let's see, this goes in here. So, as I said, this is a number four quill brush. The quill brush sizes are much different than, I say, a round brush. A four of a round brush would be, you know, way smaller than this. Okay, I want to continue that wash. So, like I said, continue to work at an angle, continue to use a loaded brush, <clears throat> bringing that bead down the page. Uh, 
just paint around some of these petal shapes. this area up here and we'll bring a little bit in here this is a fairly light wash. Got that, and that's going to be part of the flower. And there we go. So I think that's where I'll stop with my green wash. And again, I'll pick up the excess moisture around the, the edges and the areas where the bead collected. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'll give this a dry. Okay, so I've dried that. I've cleaned my palette. And I'm going to paint uh, uh, the centers of these flowers. And I'm going to use, let's see, what do we got here? I'm going to use a quill brush. I'm going to use a couple colors here. I'm going to use some quinacridone gold. And uh, I'm going to use... Also, this is quinacridone uh, violet, maybe a little mauve. Mauve is a nice violet. This is more of a red violet. So I'm going to take, uh, let's see, I'm going to get another brush. I'm going to take this. This is an eight round brush. It doesn't have a real sharp point. I'm going to use some of this quinacridone gold. Maybe I'll put a little, let's see, you can have a little hands of yellow even in there. So I'm going to take uh, this mauve and uh, put some of that in the center. Enjoy experimenting with some of these colors a little bit. <clears throat> these colors kind of make each other sing, work, working on uh, the, the yellows and then the, the violets, red violets, the yellow greens on different sides of the color, color wheel. So they, they start to kind of, you know, they, they, make, they make one another, uh, make the bright colors a little brighter by position and by a complement. All right, so I want to make sure I have a, plenty of moisture in this. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a, a little bit of salt in this. I like to, to create kind of the, the texture to suggest the seeds in the sunflower. And as I said, I've done, done a couple sunflower videos, and I use this this kind of technique. Uh, but I need to make sure I have enough moisture to. Uh, to make that sun, uh, the the salt effective. There's another way I can do it too. With uh, a splatter or or lifting off to get the texture. I'm gonna get a little bit more of this red violet. Conacridin violet. And now I'm going to sprinkle uh, some salt there. Let's see, we'll put a little salt. We should hopefully have enough moisture in there. I'm not sure if we do, but we'll see. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to spritz a little bit of moisture on there with this spray bottle just to make sure 
there's enough to to create that texture and then I'm going to come in I'm going to do a bit of the same here on this other this other flower And again, I'll spritz a little bit of salt, or sprinkle a little bit of salt on there. And spritz a little bit of water. And now I'm going to go ahead and dry those, and then I'll knock that salt off. Okay, so I've dried that, and now I'm going to take a tissue, just rub that off. And I like the texture that it gives me, just to suggest some seeds in the, uh, the center of the flower. I have all that off. And now, I'm going to take, uh, let's see, I'm just going to take, uh, this is a number six round brush. And let's see, I'm going to start to develop some of the edges here. Get going on this. So I want to push this area back here. So I'm working off the negative, the exterior edge of that, and I refer to it as the negative edge. And uh, start to develop the, the petals of the sunflower by painting the, the, uh, around the edge on the outside in negative space. Here I want to be pushed back. So when I say pushed back, I'm just talking about uh, back in space. I want it to feel like it's you know behind the the the, ajab, the object that's adjacent to it. So I'm going to take a little burnt orange. This is quinacrid and burnt orange. I'm just going to touch in here a little bit. And 
I'm also painting, you know, I'm painting both positive and negative. So I'm painting the, the overlapping object, the petal, as well as the space between the petals. A little above as I do this. I'm not going to get too, you know, too involved in, in little details. I'm keeping this pretty simple for this video. Now I start to try and develop some of these uh, edges where I'm working a negative space between the petals, but I'm also, the space in between them is actually the a petal and behind the, the petals in front. A little gradation, I'll touch it with a tissue to, to soften the, the edge. There's lots of edge development. Just keep going around these petals. I'm trying to keep some lost edges as I paint this. Is darker back here. All right, I think it's enough for now. I'm going to go ahead and I'll uh, I'll dry that. Okay, so I cleaned my right side of my palette, and I'm going to take this is a large wash brush here. Actually, I think I'm going to use my eight round brush. Get a little sap green out here. And let's see, I might add a little bit of this pyro red to it. Give me kind of a grade down 
or semi-neutral. Okay, we'll work with this. Take a little water, let that get a little lighter there. A little sharper point here on this. So here I'm working in a middle value range right now. And down here we start to get more into a red violet actually. There's still some some green, but there's actually quite a bit of red violet. Kinds of little nooks and crannies in this. Probably glaze over that and tone that down a little bit. Okay, go to my size 8 round brush again. to my quill brush. I go to my quill brush when I want a bit more of a point just because my eight round brush that I'm using doesn't doesn't have really much of a point. I want to get darker back here. Got a little bit of uh, a little strong green right here. I picked up some sap green off my palette. Gonna get too complicated in here. Keep the shape simple. Just trying to get this to feel like the background there. I go darker in some of these areas. And see if we can go much darker there. Okay, let me give this a dry. So that's dry. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna put in some darker shapes. 
uh, in the in the background. I'm not going to get too too complicated with uh, a lot of detail on this. Keep it pretty simple. It's just a nice little uh, eight by ten painting. I could actually I could stop right here and, and be satisfied, but I'm going to do a little bit more. Let's see. Actually, you start to see how dark that value is compared to uh, what I've been working with. I'm just using this quill brush right now. I might, uh, might decide to put a glaze over top of this to turn, tone this down and lower the contrast. But I'm just going to put some shapes in here where we have some in the the all the leafy shapes this this starts to push these areas back a little in space so just some some darker shapes Keep working my way in some of these areas in negative space. And let's see, we'll go here. I like to paint some of these these paintings when I just start working with little shapes. And working in negative space, I put a little bit of a glaze right here. It's darker. Again, push this area back. Let's see. Touch darker here. Add, add a little water to my brush and uh, just soften that. We get a little gradation in that. Maybe a touch there. And let's see. Some dark values, some dark values. I'm gonna go to uh, to my red violet. And some of this is kind of a red violet tone here. Helps distribute that color a little bit and create a better balance. And then also take a little touch of green and put in there. Gives me a nice semi neutral. And I think I'm going to carry that tone down a little bit. I, I don't want that cut off in the corner. I want to take it all the way to the corner. And we'll take a little bit of this up here. Touch of that in there while that's wet. Got some areas here where I can use a little of that. A little bit of green. Let's see. I could get real fussy with these petals, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. Let me see. Bring a little of this just to balance things. And get a little bit of this over in this area. Okay, so I'm going to drive this. All right.
right, that's dry. I'm gonna take my eight round brush. I'm gonna take some of the sap green mixture. I'm just gonna glaze over this area. It's gonna to tone the contrast down, push things back a little bit, and let some of these other areas kind of come forward with a, with a flower. Make sure I like this shape here, the edge. And, uh, let's see. I think I want to put just a little bit of a, a little bit of kind of a quinacrid and violet glaze over this leaf here. Put a little of that up in here. Once again, let's see. Yeah. Actually, I want to strengthen this just a little bit. Blot that with a tissue. Put a little bit of that and a little texture, additional texture with a darker value on top of what's in there. Okay, I want to dry what I've got there. Okay, so that's dry and that's where, really where I'm going to stop. So uh, just have a little bit of fun with the, with the shapes. Put some big washes on to start with a yellow, put the green on and did the center with some of this texture and then started to develop some of the edges. I didn't go overboard with it with a lot of de detail. I kept the, tried to keep the shapes just kind of uh, simple and interesting. And uh, that's where I'm gonna stop. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope you have fun uh, taking this into your processes and into your paintings.